this episode is a continuation of last week, which if you guys were here, we did the county fair. I went to two county fairs in two, I guess, two county fairs in one week, the Alameda County Fair and the Marin County Fair. And then this week, I went to the state fair in, uh, in Sacramento, which is the biggest fair that I've ever been to. And I saw some, basically on Sarp World, let me just tell you guys, we not only do art here, we do lots of art, lots of different kinds of art, we have fun, but we also discuss, you know, serious social issues. And I want to discuss one of those today, which was the food of the fair. It was disturbing, it was beautiful, it shocked me, it, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I made a long list of all the foods that I saw, and you guys know, having watched the show before, that I like to draw people in food costumes. So we are going to have a lot of fun, we have a lot of ground to cover because the stuff that I saw was just, it was so disturbing. I, that's all I can say, it was so disturbing. And it was wonderful. So let's just get started. I just want to start. What we're going to do today is some, um, we're going to use some um, water-soluble etching ink. You can, you can just go ahead and mix it up. The best thing about this stuff for you guys, you printmakers, is it's so easy to clean up. It's just water-soluble. No mess. We're going to be using a lovely piece of plexiglass that's been filed and beveled so it goes through the press nice and easy. We're going to be printing from this. Oh, did I forget to fill my water? Oh, I have some water. No, no fears, no worries. Um, we're going to just be using some water. I have a exacto knife because we're going to use also a bunch of tissue paper and lots of paper to collage for our colors. We're going to do some shin collé. That's the technical term for adding color to our to our prints. And afterward, we're going to decorate them with these lovely colors of pens and graphite and materials I've been collecting. What I like to do on this show is just kind of improvise. I kind of just go for it. I, there's no real set plan, especially today. So we're just going to just see what happens. And I have no idea, except for the first one, which I, which I kind of thought ahead of time, like maybe like 15 minutes ahead of time. But otherwise, you, just get, you guys are going to see the art process as it happens for me, like live. It might not work. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but that's how art is, you know, so you guys get to see just the creative process as it is. So let's get, and then I got the wheat paste to stick the, to stick the paper, or to stick the tissue paper to our lovely printmaking paper. So what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to first draw onto this plexiglass with ink. And we're going to start with one of my, I've tried something new. I tried something new at the fair this time. It was called Dip and Dots. It was, it was ice cream that has been frozen into these tiny little, using some kind of, I'm sure, like lovely, edible, safe chemical that's frozen all of the ice cream into these tiny beads. And when you eat them, it feels like they're, um, you know, having some weird chemical reaction in your mouth that I'm sure is not healthy, but it feels really weird and really good. Um, Dip and Dots are something new for me. I guess they've been around since the 80s, but I'm, I'm kind of slow to catch on. So... For, I, I tried them, it was like rainbow sherbet, and I was like, this is disgusting, and then yet I kept eating them, like as is the food with the fair. So let's get started, pour a little water in, this is going to be for watering down our ink. And what I'm going to do my first piece, like I said, we have a lot of ground to cover. Um, I'm just going to try to get through all the different foods, I'm going to give them all their own story. And if you like any of these pieces that you see me draw today at the compound, you can always come on down here and purchase them, or you can look at more of art on alisontharp.com if you're interested in other stuff you haven't seen on the show. But I know that after you see this, you're going to want to put this up on your, on your wall at home. And if not, then I'll be taking it home. So mixing up some ink. I've got two different size brushes. So... Let's start here. So Dip and Dot started in a laboratory. I'm going to make like a com like kind of like a comic strip. So here's the first panel. This is a concept that I just came up with because I'm like, who and why and how did this happen? Why? Why are humans eating this? Why? And then like, why not? Oops. Why not? So let's do our panels. We'll do three. Like a comic strip, kind of. And I think the evolution of Dip and Dots will look great as a three panel comic. So, 
let me just tell you how this happened, first of all. I'm standing outside of this kind of pavilion thing in Sacramento. It's like 100, I don't know, like 106 degrees. It's really hot for anybody. I mean, I'm from the valley, so I know how. I haven't experienced heat like that in a long time, and it, and it was hot. And I don't usually, I mean, I probably wouldn't usually consume, I'm being from like the Berkeley area, consume a food that was made of lots of artificial colors, like anything that's blue or pink or green, like I probably wouldn't eat it because of my Berkeley-itis, but I was so hot and it was just like excruciating. So I'm like, I need something cold and I need it now. So I purchased the dipping dots as I was waiting for the hypnotist to start. Because when we go to the fair, my boyfriend and I, we don't just, we don't just go to the fair and like leave or just go to the fair and like go on the rides and leave. Like we stay like for hours. Like it's at least nine hours that we stay. We stay all day. We take everything from the fair. We, we watch motocross. We saw a hypnotist. We saw several live grunge bands from Sacramento that were really into it. We saw some high school bands. Um, we just saw everything, which I'll, I'll go into a little bit later. But what, as I was standing outside waiting for the hypnotist to start, I purchased the Dippin' Dots. And this is how I believe the Dippin' Dots were created. So there's a laboratory somewhere. They probably were created sometime in the 40s. Almost all of the foods that we enjoy that are weird were made sometime like during World War II for some reason, either before or after, to, for some reason. Like canned food, mayonnaise. Maybe it was made in the 50s, like when things were, when they were interested in the future. Like this is the future of everything. Freeze it or fry it. That's, the, that's like the mentality of the fair. So here's, there's like beakers. There's like scientific things. And I love this ink because it's, here's like a Bunsen burner. And like a scientist who's bald. This ink is great because it's like, it's so fast. I mean, the oil ink is like a lot brighter and a lot, you know, it's just a lot more saturated and darker. Let's give him some forehead wrinkles because he's really concentrating with some glasses. But this stuff is great because when you put it through the press, you don't know what kind of results you're going to get. So they get really, the, the work gets really sketchy. Like, I may have to fill it in with some other materials. And you'll see I have a couple of uh, little pieces to add to make his little hair. So. It's, it starts with like an old dude in a laboratory, like so many things, and a dream. An old man, a laboratory, or maybe a woman, but I imagine since it was so long ago, ladies didn't have the same opportunities. So an old man and a dream. And I have these cutouts. which I will assemble here, which I won't show you till after I send it through the press. I'll put some of this on here. This is gonna stick it to our paper. Let's, let's do that old dude like, a really like sallow kind of yellow face because he's been in the laboratory for like, 30 straight hours trying to perfect. And then at the end, we have a, like a, a beautiful plastic bowl of the, one of the most bizarre foods you'll ever eat. And if you go to the fair, you should definitely try them. And they come in, it's like every flavor you can imagine of course, but I recommend the most colorful ones or the most artificially colored ones if you can. Well, I mean, may as well just go for it. And they're all different sizes. This is the weirdest food I've ever, I can't even explain it. So anyway, the hypnotist was one of the most, I mean, I've seen hypnotists at other fairs. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of fairs and I've, I've seen many. And this one was probably the most disturbing. I, I, I can't say that I enjoyed it at the end because the people that were hypnotized, 
didn't get unhypnotized. Like, they, I think they ran out of time, and they just, like, sent the people back into the audience confused as if they had had amnesia or they had had a blackout or something. They just walked back into the crowd with, like, lipstick on their faces and all these things weird messed up in the head, all the things they had done and not remembered, and they... They're like asking their loved ones, you know, what, like, what happened? Like, what, what did I do? And they, I was like, isn't she going to unhypnotize him? But she didn't. And, um, and one of them was kind of like a, she was like a big cowboy. And I'm like, you don't want to leave a big cowboy, like, unhi like hypnotize him and then not unhypnotize him. Because who, who knows what he's capable of? It was pretty scary. But it was also sort of funny. I'm sure that they bought the CD or the DVD and then later discovered what they did. But I'm glad I didn't go up there. I don't think that uh, I don't think that I would go up there after seeing that. So here's what the Dippin' Dots look like, and then there's like a nice plastic spoon. Everything with Dippin' Dots should be plastic. Go for it. And when we oh, you know what we're gonna do too is we're going to put. Our colors on there. Let's make the dip and dots. Let's give them a, a nice artificial blue color with this tissue paper. I tell people that I go to the fair sometimes, and they're like, "Oh, I haven't been to the fair since you know I was a kid, or I never go to the fair." But if they don't go to the fair, they're really missing out because the fair is one of the weirdest things you'll ever see. We saw motocross playing to really loud ACDC, and Guns and Roses. And where do you get to see that kind of thing, ever? It's such a special experience. So let's like our, our nice artificial color for our different dots there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is wet the paper because this paper has to be slightly damp or it's not going to work. And the, like, the wetter the paper is, the more splotchy this paper, because it, it's like watercolor, this ink, it'll spread the wetter the paper is. So I'm going to wet it just a little bit. So I want to keep some of my lines. So come with me over to the press. And we'll set it here. Oh, and let me grab my paper, too. Oops, I forgot it. It's going back. Okay, so we'll grab my paper. Give it another spray. Bring it on over. I'm going to put it down right on top of my ink. Right on top here. I'm actually going to spray the back a little bit as well to make the paper a, uh, a little more pliable so that it really sticks to the so that it really sticks to the, um, the plate. And this is a nice cover paper so that it, we don't get any bleed through just in case to try to keep our blankets clean. All right, let's send it through. I might have to send it through once more. That doesn't feel like a lot of pressure. I'm going to go back and read pressure. Tighten it a little bit more. There we go. Okay, let's see what we got.
Oh, yeah, it definitely worked. You can see. It printed through. You can tell there's the paper. Here, it's got kind of an emboss. Oh. oh, that's good. We can work with that. Oh, my God, there's a hair on top of it. Oh, that's crazy. How did the hair get in there? Let's take it away. So now what we have is the backwards evolution. We have the dip and Dots back into history. A dude dreamt of them. And then it was really weird for him before he dreamt of them. It was He had a, a tough life, as you can tell. So that, that's the evolution of the dip and Dot. And when these little guys come off, we can kind of restick them with a little bit of glue. But then we have like a nice comic here. It won't make sense to anybody else, ever. So if you're watching this, you'll know what this is about, but otherwise, for the, for the future, the people that see this will just think that's like some like weird cereal, and then like a guy was dreaming of something, or else that's a cloud, and then maybe, who, who knows what that's about. But we'll know what it's about. Okay. So now, the great thing about this stuff, oh, I need, will you hand me my, oh yeah, thank you. The great thing about this is we can work really fast and make a whole new one in like no time. It just wipes right off with water. And it's probably even better the second time because the plate's already wet and then it sticks better. Okay, so let's make another one. The next food I'm thinking of exploring. I mean, a whole list. Let me, let me read to you the list, first of all, of all the foods. So there was all the fried foods. We had fried cookie dough, fried Twinkie on a stick, fried cheesecake, fried Reese's peanut butter cup, fried Oreo, fried Nutella, fried, deep fried pineapple upside down cake on a stick, corn dog in three lengths, long, really long and extra long. We had turkey legs, dip and dots, which we just covered, and then my favorite was the Krispy Kreme donut burger, which we covered a little bit last week. So as you could, there's a lot of different foods we can talk about, but the fried foods were the cutest because as I was standing in line to purchase um, the fried, we tried the cookie dough and what was the other one that we, I think maybe it was just the cookie dough that we tried, but someone standing in line said that the, it was really insightful what they said, that the, the fried foods looked like a snake had swallowed what was, what was in it, like the cheesecake was, was, the shape of cheesecake, but, you know, but it was, like, all covered in, like, softness, as if, like, a, like a soft, you know, fluffy, like, yellow snake had eaten them. So, it looks like this. And it was nestled in a, in a lovely little checkered carton with a little piece of tissue paper. The way they present the foods was just so adorable. And they sprinkle it with powdered sugar and drizzle chocolate all over it. And the powdered sugar is just for the experience of like making a mess. It doesn't actually add to the flavor, from what I'm told. It just gets all over you, and you inhale it. And it's, it's just an experience. It's just a beautiful experience. So... The, the food itself almost completely con is cons you know, consumes the paper. It consumes its carton. And there, if you were just to see the food without the sign describing it, you wouldn't have any idea what was underneath the fried blanket. It would be a fun game to... To, to test people to see like what's what is this fried thing, but for the purpose of Tharp Worlds and since we love to, since we love to play and we love to make fun of everything and give everything faces, especially food items, I'm going to create a persona for this fried cheesecake. And you know, if you're a piece of fried food, there's no way to be unhappy. Like this is very, he's very pleased with himself. 
and his little hand was just this is this what I had in mind for this show was to put like some fr of the fried items like in a row kind of like when they're going to the snack bar like at the movies those 1950s like characters that were just like come on to the snack bar you know like that's what's gonna kind of look like in this kind of row so we'll just The grunge bands we saw were just fantastic. They attracted quite a following of people. They were so into it. Let's see his little legs. We saw a high school band that was doing cover songs. But the best part about the fair, and this isn't something that a lot of people really... Oh yeah, that's it. This is what I'm talking about. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Except all of these guys are like totally unhealthy. Like there's nothing healthy about any of this. It's, and there's nothing else to eat. So it's an experience to go to the fair. You might want to bring a snack if you're a, the, a Berkeley type. Bring some trail mix. Because you will, you'll be starving. There's only this kind of stuff. Look how happy that guy is. The fried cheesecake. And I think, you know, I think they're on sticks. I think they're on sticks. I think all of them are. Yeah, they are, actually. You know what I for also forgot was the fried Snickers. There's like a fried Snickers bar. There's fried cheese, and I forgot that one, too. But let's, like, the Oreos were so cute. You know what they looked like? They looked like little, they looked like little golf balls that had been fried. They were, like, and there was, like, six of them to a carton all nestled in like little baby birds in a nest, just, like, glistening and cute, and you just want to crunch on them. They were so cute. It's really hard to not be in a good mood when you see these things. Because they, they look, they're all kind of stuck together, but they're not actually cooked together, and they're kind of crispy around the edges. There's, I think there's about six to a carton. They're just adorable. It's, I think the Oreo is the best value if you're, gonna, if you're really like, hurting for cash when you're there and you really want to eat a lot of fried food, go for the Oreos because you get six of them to a carton. Give this a little. Let me see this other, I'm gonna use this other because we're doing some detailed work here. I wanna give each of these Oreos like their own personality. I think they're all little baby birds. When it was like kind of not too crowded at this fair because I think we're we went really we I mean we like to get an early start so we were there probably like around 10. No, maybe it was a little later than that in the afternoon. There wasn't a lot of people there yet, and so I saw a beautiful thing too. I mean, if you really just walk around the fair and just like really watch. You see people having dreams come true everywhere. I watched this little kid, and he was with his mom, and there's this trampoline machine. There's this trampoline thing where you could get on, like, a bungee cord, and you could jump really high and do flips. And the kid was, like, no other kids were around. There was no line. It was like being a great America. There's no line for the roller coasters, and so he's there. And he gets on that thing, and he's this chubby little kid, and he's just, like, on top of the world. Like, he's just bouncing. And he's just like, his, his just like his arms are in the air, and he's like screaming, and he's like flipping about once or twice, and then he's done. He's like, okay, I'm done. Like my dream came true. Let me off the thing. And it, it was like a quick, but but beautiful instance of a child winning, like a little chubby child winning at the fair, just having a beautiful experience and achieving something that he was probably looking forward to, which was getting on that trampoline with no other children around. And I got a chance to like really watch that kid have fun, and that was so cool. 
But I was going to say that my favorite part of the fair, one of my favorite parts, is going into the infomercial room. And this is something modern. This is a new phenomenon. This isn't something that I remember from the county fair when I was a kid. It's this, like, this room that you go in. There's many of them, actually. There's like four different huge co like, like coliseum-type things you walk through. And everywhere you look, there's a different infomercial happening live. So like you can buy a massage chair or some lotion or beef jerky or some kind of Swiffer or pots and pans or get direct TV all in the same room and everyone's like barking at you at once to like purchase their items. And you can even sit down and watch like a cooking show like while you're there. It's so fun. I mean, if you don't like a hard sell, then don't go in there because they're definitely trying to get you to buy stuff. But if you walk through just looking at it as entertainment, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's a very American thing. I, it's a beautiful little, little slice of our culture. It's funny and scary. And when I go to these places, I always get inspired to come back and do art. Because, I mean, it's just like out of the ordinary stuff, you know, just going and doing stuff that you wouldn't normally do, like day to day. It's, it's there, there's just so much fuel for art there. I saw some good haircuts and I saw some bad haircuts. Oh, these little guys are so cute. We're going to have to label these afterwards so that people will know what they are. And then look, what could be last on this, like, oh, the fried cookie dough. The fried cookie dough was adorable. It looked like a tiny little mini corn dog, but when you bit into it, it was like a kind of a partly cooked cookie because it was deep fried, so, and it was covered in powdered sugar. It, it was just the cutest thing. I'm going to make it, like, with a bite, take, like, a bite taken out of it so you can see, like, the, the cookies, like, coming out. Like, the, it's just look, like everything at the fair that's good, it's also, you, I mean, if you really, you can stretch your imagination and make it disgusting and obscene, which I do often. I mean, everything at the fair is like that. It's kind of a gross place. <laughs> it's, it's not just kind of a gross place, it's a gross place. But it's fun. So this is what the cookie dough, this is what it looks like in, the, the fried thing is like it's blanket and it's like, <laughs> okay now this is the portion of the show where it starts to get disturbing. It's almost like I have to get warmed up. I didn't bring out the bad drawing book so I think like the first one is warm up. And now it really starts to get into the flow of like, what this show is really about, which is, which is making art like really, really, really silly. Using all the techniques that I've learned to make really good art and then just like making art that's just like ridiculous. <laughs> this is really upsetting. This is one of just like, every time I do a show, I'm like, that was the most upsetting piece of art I've ever done. And I think <laughs> this is actually getting to be one of the most upsetting pieces that I've done. This one right here is it's really bad. The cat hair, I, if you guys have seen the other episodes on YouTube or on the Compound website, we've crafted with cat hair for like three weeks in a row, and I thought that was some of like the most disturbing art that I've ever made. But though this is subtle and all, not all that, you know, not all that out there in terms of materials, the subject matter is, is, is like, it's just, I don't even know what to say about it. This one especially. So I'm going to give it the cheesecake. Um, the color of the cheesecake is like this yellow. I mean, basically all the food is this color. It's really hard to find. I don't know why I brought all these other colors. The fried food is only one color. 
And it's this color. Let's just take this color. We don't need that. We don't need that anymore. The fried food is only one color. So I'm going to tear it into the shape of the cheesecake person and put it right on top. I really don't know why I brought all those colors. When we're dealing with food, bear food, tan, what do they call it? The colors like tan and brown. You know that's why everything's so colorful at the fair? Like all the, you know, all the awnings and all the, all the, all the, you know, umbrellas and the tables. Everything's like bright blue and like pink and green and just awesome primary colors too. It's because everything else is, is tan. All the food is, all the food is the same color. And so if those things were the same color, everything would be the same color and it would not be fun to be there. So let's, we'll add a couple little detail colors with our pens after this. So the, the ink, the great thing about doing this technique is the ink prints right through. I'm sure you, if you guys have seen my other shows, when you run this through the press, the, t the ink prints through the tissue paper, and that's why it's so fun to, you can add color to your prints that way. Instead of using other colors of ink, you can just add big blocks of color using your, like rice paper, tissue paper works really well. Magazines don't work as well as you can see with my last one. It kind of peels up a little and you might have to re-glue it. Thicker papers don't work as well, but you can, you can always fix it. Not the end of the world. So we'll put that, but the, the cookie dough itself is a slightly darker color than the fried casing. It's an important detail for those of us who are that weird and pay that close attention. Here's like a little bit darker color of, this is kind of like a weird texture too. It's got like, it's kind of a, a funny texture of paper, but let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens when we do this. If they overlap, it won't stick, so let's just. Okay, and then put some wheat paste on to make it stick. Lovely. And before I put the paper over there, I'm going to just lay it down. I'm going to do a little more than last time. I think it didn't stick as well. It wasn't really wet enough. Okay, so let's bring this over. And then carry this very, very carefully because see how if I move it too much, it's going to fly out all over the place. And that would be horrible. Just horrible. So ever so gently. go and the paper. This paper is pretty wet, so maybe we're going to get some cool effects with the overlap. Oh, I have a good feeling about this one. Uh oh, I have a, this. Tape, this is overlapping a little. I'm just going to tear this. Got a little bit past the paper, but it's okay. That's what this is for. Okay. Let's move this over. Should have fixed the blanket arm. Okay. Oh, I need a little push with this thing. Give it a little push. more fried foods to cover. I hope I can do them all in one episode. Because I'd love to present these to you guys in a, a lovely series. For any fans of the fair, I know you guys are out there. I know that I'm not alone. And you know, you can interact with this. You can interact with our world. You can actually 
put on comments while the show is happening, and I may or may not find out what you said until I may find out after, but I might find out during. And you can help me collaborate on the show too. If there's any fried foods that I forgot about, please let me know because I thought I got all of them, but I might have missed one. I'm sure I've missed some because, I mean, there's so many. That's why we have each other to help to help out because. I get overwhelmed and fixated on like one particular fried item and then I miss like two others. Like I can't believe I almost, oh god, I forgot the, there's fried watermelon too. I forgot to tell you guys about that one. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my god. They're just lovely. Look at how pleased the fried cookie dough is with itself. That's just horrible. Look at him. I would not eat what I did not want what he has. Oh my gosh, the fried Oreos are cute though, and the fried cheesecake. They see the color is it's about accurate. That's good. That's about what they look like. Let's move on. So let's. What do we have so far? We have the invention of dip and dots. This is sticking, unsticking, but and then we have this. Our like fried, beautiful fried people. Let's take this over. This is like looking really fast and quick. We have a lot of ground to cover. Wipe this down. I, I haven't used this water soluble ink in a while and it's it's so awesome. Because if you have an idea, you can just print it really fast and it's just like no big deal. You can do it so quick and then you're like, yes, that was, that was what I wanted to do and now I can Maybe you just have two minutes to do it. You're really in a hurry. Okay. Next, let's let's think about let's think about the different si let's think about the three different sizes of corn dogs and the deep fried pineapple on did I, no no the deep fried pineapple upside down cake on a stick. And the three different sizes of corn dogs. I watched a family eat the, the corn dogs, and it was just like so weird. And the corn dogs were for every, you know, it was like every size family member could 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 get the corn dog that was right for them. And you guys have not seen a big corn dog until you've been to the fair. I'm telling you, like I didn't even think they made them that big, but they do. And then what's the third item? Let's do a, the fried Nutella. That's a tricky one because it's a liquid. My niece tried the fried Nutella and she said that, you know, you can only, you can only really take like one or two bites of it before it just leaks all over the place and makes a big mess. So I don't know about the fried Nutella being a very good thing to fry. I think it, you, need a, you need a solid, you know, they're, they're trying. Let's try the, we did the Oreo. The Twinkie dog. That's a, that's a weird one, you guys. The tw like they can make a Twinkie dog. They can, instead of a let's do that. It's like the the cousin of the corn dog, the Twinkie dog. So the corn dog, a basic, a classic. The Twinkie dog. It's it's cousin. A, a, about the same size, a bit more like square, square-ish. Kind of looks like this. And they're friends, but they don't, I mean, they're more like frenemies, you know? Because the corn dog is like, it's just like, are you replacing me? Or are we just, are you, are you like, are we buddies or like what do you like? I don't understand why you're here. Like what? I, I like why are you trying to improve on corn dog? It's it's perfect. The Twinkie dog is like you know what? Times are changing, my friend. But it's a new it's a new kind of county fair. So he's having some insecurity. That's okay. He's working it through as the corn as the Twinkie dog is. He's just kind of hanging out. He's so easygoing. It's hard to hate him. That's the thing. Oh, the fried asparagus. Oh my god, you guys. The fried asparagus and there's fried artichokes. Yes, you're right. 
There's fried asparagus and fried artichokes. I forgot about those cause, because they were in the kiosk that was a little healthier. There was like a ve fried vegetable area, but it was really far away from the other fried stuff. It was like they didn't want people to go over there. They're like, yeah, if you really need something fried, but you're like kind of healthy, then go way over to all the way to the outskirts of the fair near the chain link fence where there's like some hay and like nothing else. And, and you might be able to fr find something that's sort of healthier for you if you just can't hang with the, the fried Twinkie and the fried corn dog and the fried, uh, what if the deep, fr the, the deep fried pineapple upside down cake on a stick had like whipped cream and a cherry. It was just crazy looking. It looked like just a big lump. Like it looked like this. It was just like you can't even tell what it is. They had to, and they put award winning too. Like they had, there was like this ribbon drawn next to it, and it looked like it was like like it had won an award, but really I think just like the person that created it gave it the award, but it really thinks highly of itself. Like it won some kind of a pageant. And don't forget to put it on a stick, you guys. Don't forget to put it on a stick and the powdered sugar. And for the viewer request, I will do the fried asparagus because I love when my viewers write to me during the show. I just absolutely love it. You guys are the best. And if you want to collaborate, I will collaborate with you to the extent that you collaborate with me. So if you want to interact, with this show, then definitely write in, because that is really fun for me. And then, of course, there's like chocolate on top. And there's all kinds of stuff, other things to do, like old-timey photos, which I haven't done yet, but those look really fun. And there's so many things that you can buy that are like encrusted with rhinestones, like jeans and tank tops, cowboy hats. There's tons of dream catchers there. All kinds of hair accessories. Oh, this is true. The state fair is, was just like a never-ending fair. I didn't even see the whole thing. It just went on and on and on and on. And not even men mentioning the rides of the games. I haven't even gotten to that yet. Now, it's really important to make sure to depict how messy these foods are too, how they leave a trail wherever they go, and that when, by the time you're finished eating this, like it is not going to be pretty, so just don't even try. Don't, don't try to make it look good, because it's going to look like carnage afterward. Mm-hmm. And now for the fried asparagus. What does fried asparagus even look like? I didn't, you know what, because they display, they display the other fried foods like they're lined up and it's, it's just like a, a beauty pageant where they're just like marching and they can line them up and then you take one and they put another one and it's like they display them because they, they're beautiful. But I don't think fried vegetables are not as beautiful and they hide them behind like an, like a, a screen or like wherever they're frying them and they only put them out when someone orders it because no one really wants to see a fried asparagus before it's eaten. It's just not that pretty, you know, it's just not that cute. It's not as cute as fried Oreos. They look like tiny little baby chicks just like hatched right out of an egg and they're so cute you want to hug them. But fried asparagus looks like a kind of like a mangled, you know, like starving animal. It's all skinny and it kind of looks it's just all kind of like a stick. And, and let's make a couple of them. 
and they're, they're not, they, they, they kind of, I mean, if you stretch your imagination, they kind of look like french fries, I guess. But I think really what frying in asparagus says is there's a time and a place, and it's not the fair. It's not the fair. I mean, you, you can get these guys, but you're going to have to go way out into the outskirts, to the border, like way out into the bad neighborhood of the fair where nobody else goes, which is maybe kids go out there to smoke pot or something. And there's like a chain link fence and like a parking lot and then maybe a, like a somebody's pickup truck that had been, you know, delivering some supplies. There's like nothing out in that area. You can find them there. If you're really looking, you can find them there. You might find trouble out there too if you, if you hang out too long over in that area. That's probably where the people go who were hypnotized and they just wander out and they're like, I don't even know who I am. I don't know how I got here. I don't know what I don't know what to do, and I'm hungry. So I made. I mean, those poor people. I hope they figured out who they were, and I hope they figured out like where the lipstick came from. And a loved one like took them to a therapist immediately. If they're they're frightened, you guys, because you know why? They're not in their element. They're not in their element. There's just like little crispies here. And, you know, thank goodness I brought this tray over that had green in it. I mean, I'll look through what I have, but I don't even know if I have anything. I'll look. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. I have this. No, but it's fried, so it's yellow. But there's specks of green because we all know that it's not. Let's, let's bring over the green because I think we can see the green actually through through the beautiful fried casing. I'm glad that I, I, I wish I had kind of more of this color. I'm glad I had this color. Because we definitely used a lot of it. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, so. The edges of this work really well because they're so straight. When we do this, you don't have to get it the perfect. That's the best thing about this technique, is when it prints right through, it kind of looks, it reminds me of the advertising they used to do, like in the magazines in the 50s. They had kind of a real blotchy look to them. Uh, dark outline, but real blotchy, like watercolor look. I just love that, and I kind of try to get that in my art. It looked really playful, especially when they were trying to, there's this playfulness about the advertising back then. They just wanted you to feel kind of carefree, like, oh, it's just fun to just smoke this carefree cigarette and just, you know, chew this gum and try this mayonnaise. Eat, make this casserole. And don't think about that our country just is in a war, you know. It's a funny time. So the Twinkies. There's the corn dog. The pineapple, the deep fried pineapple upside down cake on the stick, which is a mouthful. Oh, you know what? I do need red for the cherry on top of that thing. Oh, thank you. My lovely assistant. You need a tiny, just a tiny bit, just a little splash of color. Just a little splash. I don't really like those hard edges. I'm take that take those hard edges off. Like that. Oh, the blue ribbon. I'm getting <laughs> getting a text. My phone is on the table. It's very unprofessional. Okay. And you know I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little bit of oh I need blue for that blue ribbon. You know also the oh god, you guys the fair is like endless fun. Like, there's little arts and crafts people have done, and judges, I don't know who the judges were, but they judge the arts and crafts, and they judge all the art. And they give so many blue ribbons. I don't know how they do this judging thing, because, like, every other person gets a blue ribbon. It's like everyone. Doesn't it kind of devalue the blue ribbon if, like, half the people in the room got the blue ribbon? But I guess it doesn't matter, because everyone's having fun. So th this is an award-winning, award-winning food item. Let's add a little bit of green to these guys. 
They should be ashamed for being at the fair. They should just go home. Just a little bit of green. It's not a place to be healthy. It's a place to contribute to a heart attack. them with little powdered sugar. See, this is kind of like an infomercial a little bit, what we do here. You know, it's just a little bit like an infomercial. It's like an art infomercial. And there's a number you can call, and you can definitely buy something if you feel like that. If you really want to make it like a, you know, as seen on TV kind of thing, you can absolutely have that experience. This artwork is just a phone call away, and it could be yours. For easy, easy payments of like five dollars, five or six easy payments of five dollars a month, this piece of this beautiful piece of work can be hanging in your home, and you can impress your guests. Uh oh, am I out of paper? I'm gonna, I know what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to reprint this on the back of one of these. I didn't really like this one anyway. Just to take care of this. I am repurposing this piece of paper for one that I think is going to be better. Or you get two for the price of one. Such a great deal. Such an unbelievable deal, an unbelievable price. If you get bored with one piece, you can just flip it over and have another one. If this works, I hope it does. You get, I'm going to have to re-glue those pieces after this. I took them off because I wasn't sure what would happen if it was going to bottom off. We'll figure it out later. It doesn't matter. Let's on with the show. It always works out. It always works out. I got really overzealous. And I guess I only cut two pieces of that paper, but it doesn't matter. I'm a lot more excited to see these fried foods. Those guys are so cute. Oh, they're adorable. I love that the way that water-based ink prints. It's how some spots are darker and some spots are lighter. There's just so much variation. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, this is stuff. Oh, yes. That looks really good. Let's unstick them from this. It's a, oh, I hope it's not stuck on there. If it is, we'll have to deal with it later. Oh, looks a little stuck. Oh, well, we'll have to deal with it later. But it looks really good. I love those guys. I, I love the way the pineapple upside down cake, it looks like it's just staring off in a direction and dreaming of something. It's just dreaming. How do you capture that look? It looks like hope to me. What do you guys think that looks like? It looks like hope and dreams. It looks like the dream... Dreams that it's going gonna, it's gonna to get eaten by someone who loves it so much. And these guys are just, you know, they don't, they don't know how good this cake has it. And look, these guys just have issues. That's what happens to vegetables at the fair when they get fried. They're, all, they're scared of her, of her possibilities and her hope and her dreams. I hope this thing comes unstuck because I love this piece. But to me, it looks like it might be a little bit stuck on there. What I may have to do is just completely cut it off this and have a backing of cardboard. 
And that will be okay, too. We'll deal with it later. Let's m moving right along. Oh, I need that. Can you hand me that? that uh, yeah. Moving right along. For my next trick, I'm going to make three individual smaller pieces, which you will find if you have Art in a Box subscription, you will find it in your Art in a Box, because that's why I'm making small ones so that I can put them in there. So if you're watching the show and you have an Art in the Box subscription, if you don't have one yet, you should definitely get one. But if you do have one, then you're going to find some fried food items waiting for you on your doorstep. So I'm going to make three, um, well, let's see, I can fit three of them on there. I'm going to make three of them, one, two, three, like that. Of these characters. So they won't be interacting with each other, but they're going to be uh-oh, there's a sticker on the back of this one. I'm going to move this over to here. They're going to be having their own fun. So, I always make a huge mess on this show. It's just like everything, at the end of the show, this whole table is just like a tornado hit. It's like the process for me is kind of, it's kind of crazy. It just goes all over the place. So I have my, I have my list of fried things. I haven't done a fried recent peanut butter cup yet. You guys, they're the second most cutest fried thing available that you can buy because they're cute and small, kind of like the fried Oreo, but they're sort of flat and disc-like, like a tiny UFO that just crash-landed into your heart on a beautiful piece of tissue paper encased in a, in a lovely little barn of red and che like checkered red, like a, little, like a tiny little bunk bed just for it little guys. They're so cute. They, they resemble the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, but little, aside from its kind of disc-like shape. They're much, much cuter. And probably much, much tastier. And I do believe that you can get, I think, a couple of them in the carton as well, because they're so small. I think maybe you get two of them, but I didn't pay much attention to this particular one, but I think you get two of them in a package. Look at how, I always like how happy the food is to be eaten. Have you ever noticed that with food advertisements when they draw the faces on them and stuff? Like they're just, it's some sort of like ecstasy or like a, some kind of, they're, they're thrilled beyond belief that you're about to consume them. And I never understood why they weren't drawn in kind of a state of terror or, you know, really like looking at their lives and examining their lives and thinking like, I have so many regrets, why didn't I laugh more? Or, you know, the dreaming of what they didn't do. But instead, they're just all really joyful and can't wait to be consumed by a human. So they kind of look like that. Oh, let's let's make the let's make the stuff leaking out of them because these ones are also really liquidy. Like the chocolate will just like I mean, be careful because you will burn yourself if you bite into it too quickly because they came right out of the fryer. So do be careful. Get a soda. Get a soda and, and make sure you have a soda handy because you're going to need a soda to, uh, to chase this intense chocolatey goodness. Make sure that the soda is, is uh, you know, ice cold and delicious. to enhance your experience.
So they're basically dancing in a, in a pool of whatever was inside of this thing. They're joyful, happy creatures. I hope this fits on top here. Oh yeah, it will, sideways, all right. Sideways, and then, yeah, so we have room for a sideways one and then two vertical ones. Oh my god, the turkey leg. The turkey leg isn't fried, but... If you haven't had it, please do. It's one of my favorites. You can't really experience the county fair unless you're carrying around like a massive turkey leg or eating it with a loved one. The best is when you see a couple enjoying the turkey. You know they love each other when they're able to like gnaw these turkey legs in front of each other. It's, it, it is not a pretty thing to do. You look like a wild animal, like chewing apart like a carcass, like on some kind of, you know, National Geographic video. It's like human beings that they're absolutely most primal and you just are tearing apart this greasy piece of smoked meat and dipping it in barbecue sauce and it's everywhere and only a loved one would appreciate you at that moment. So bring a person that you love. Bring a person that you love to the fair. And if you don't know that they love you, then test them out with the eat a turkey leg in front of them and see what they say. You look cute. See how much do they want you to be happy? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is really upsetting. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoever gets this in their art in a box, they're going to be really bummed. <laughs> or they're going to be really thrilled. It's like one or the other. I hope whoever gets this one will give it a really, really special place, like a prominent place in their home. And this is a little cup of barbecue sauce. It'll be fun to tell everybody what a great art collector you are and then have them come over and see the, the kind of art that you actually do collect. We'll see if they still love you after that. <laughs> and then we've got the pineapple, the turkey, the like thing. Cheesecake, we got the cookie dough, we got the Nutella. The Nutella. Let's do the Nutella. This will be perfect because we can add a lot of. So basically, it starts out like a. Starts out like a corn dog. But then it just like. leaks out all over the place. So what we're gonna do is make its face in the chocolate. This is gonna might be one of the better ones actually. We're just gonna fill it in in reverse. That's what fried Nutella looks like. It wouldn't be true to life if it wasn't spilling all over the place, making a huge mess. This fried turkey legs, I don't like him. That gives me a bad feeling. <laughs> I don't like him at all. Maybe someone will. I like him and I don't. Which is maybe the best possible reaction anyone could have. So let's put like these colors on these guys. 
And the fried turkey leg is kind of a darker color. We'll use, we'll use this sketchy looking paper because it has also a nice texture on it. Look at that. Nice texture. We use this for the cookie dough texture too. We'll place that right on top. These are really kind of coming out pretty cool. I'm liking the black with this kind of neutral tissue paper. Keeping it simple. I brought over all those colors, but I don't need them. The fair is a pretty simple, straightforward kind of place. There's no irony in the fair. You go there for a good time, you get a good time. You go there for sometimes you get a, a sketchy time if you get, if you let yourself get hypnotized by some sketchy fair hypnotist. Let's, you, you, that's on you because that who knows like what's going to happen when you do that you, at your own risk, you know. Those are people that I admire. Those people's adventurous spirit, though, really. I mean, I don't. I definitely don't want to do that. Okay. Let's spray this paper down. I'm going to try this thing where I lay the paper on first, and then carry it over. Because it doesn't really have to happen on the press. It can happen anywhere. I can't wait to see who gets that turkey leg. I hope whoever, like, art in the box person gets that will write to me and show me, like, where they've hung it in their home. on over. We're making a really good time. We've already produced so many pieces of fried. I mean, it's hard to, to crank them out as fast as they can crank them out at the fair, but I'm doing my best. But you know what I need is a piece of over. I'll use this one. Just to protect the blanket. It's okay. Oh, will you give a little push? Just like, yeah. Let's see how these guys turn out. really well. Oh my god. These are actually really, really fun. This guy, is, this is so scary. Oh my gosh, these are so good. I love them. And they're not, they're going to need to be flattened, but I'm glad they're not sticking to the paper too much. Oh, they're perfect. That's good. And these little guys look so happy. Oh, look at how cool that looks with that, the way that printed. I love that effect. It's really hard to get without the, without that water-based ink. It just looks so, it's just so fun, the variation in those lines. Cool. How, what time is it? Do we have any time to do more? Oh, yeah, it's time. Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's beyond time to, to wrap it up. So let's just lay out all the front. Let's just, like, in the true spirit of the county fair, let's lay out all of our items so that we can get a nice view of everything that's available. If you just let yourself dream of it. Look at all these fried foods. Don't look at them. They're not as cute. But award-winning. 
award-winning fried foods. We have all of them. We have our cookie dough, our Oreos, our fried cheesecake on a stick, our fried pineapple upside-down cake on a stick, fried Twinkie, fried corn dog, fried Nutella, fried Reese's peanut butter cups, turkey leg not fried but really weird looking and really disturbing and, and delicious. He's delicious. And then we have sp fried asparagus um, upon request on the outskirts of the fair where all the pickup trucks are and like there's sawdust and like, you know, there's, there's nothing out there for you. Don't go except if you want that. So another episode of Tharp World. It goes by so fast, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please come by the compound and check out all the other work here. And I will see you next week. <laughs>